Hi, we're Team 24751 Green Amps Robotics Team, and welcome back to FTC 101. In this video, we will walk you through the basics of getting started with coding your robot. We'll cover the different programming environments available, the skills you'll need, and a walkthrough of starting your FTC programming project. So let's dive in and get your robot moving. There are several environments you can use to program your robot, including Blocks, Onboard Java, and Android Studio. For teams that are absolute beginners, Blocks is a great option. It's a simple way to code basic actions for your robot, and it has a straightforward design that makes it easy to program for newcomers. However, if you need more functionalities in your code, Blocks might not be the best choice. A better choice could be Onboard Java. If you already know a little bit about programming, or even better, if you're familiar with Java, Onboard Java is definitely worth a try. It offers much more flexibility than Blocks, with plenty of resources available if you need help. However, if you're looking to add advanced functionalities to your robot using external libraries, keep in mind that integrating them into Onboard Java is nearly impossible, so this might not be the ideal choice. Luckily, there's a solution for our needs, Android Studio. If you're familiar with programming, I would highly recommend it. For starters, it has a much more appealing interface compared to Onboard Java. Additionally, it offers access to a wider range of libraries and plugins that can enhance your robot's performance. Android Studio also supports GitHub integration, making it easier to collaborate with your team. Overall, Android Studio provides you with almost unlimited flexibility, making it an ideal choice for programming in FTC. In this series, we will focus on the use of Java and Android Studio. Java is the most commonly used programming language in FTC. In FTC programming, the basics of Java, such as classes, methods, variables, and loops, are essential. Beyond the basics, understanding object-oriented programming, arrays, and error handling will give you a lot of control over your robot's actions. To really dive into Java programming for FTC, there's an excellent tutorial that can guide you step by step, covers everything you need to know from the basics of Java to more advanced techniques specific to FTC. This guide also provides you with some exercises to help you further understand the coding process. I'll put the link of the tutorial in the description down below. In FTC, you're likely working with a team which requires a lot of organization. So you need a platform to help keep your code organized and to coordinate with your teammates. That's where GitHub comes in. With GitHub, you can manage your code, collaborate without overriding each other's work, and go back to any previous versions if needed. To get started, be sure to check out some beginner GitHub tutorials online. These will walk you through creating a repository to store your project, making commits to save changes, and using branches to test code safely. Learning these basics will take your programming to the next level and help your team stay organized. So, give it a try and see how GitHub can help your team program much more efficiently. For the rest of the video, I'll walk you through setting up your development environment and making your first commit on GitHub. The first thing you'll need to do is install Git. In simple words, Git is like GitHub, but it runs on your local machine. To push your code to GitHub, you need Git installed. To get started, go to gitscm.com and follow the instructions there. The setup process should be pretty straightforward. In here, you can select Use Notepad as Git's default editor. Once you have finished installing Git, the next step is to install Android Studio. Head over to developer.android.com studio and follow the instructions to download and set it up. Android Studio is the main tool you'll use to program your FTC robot, so make sure to get it installed and ready to go.
while waiting for Android Studio to finish installing, it's time to download your first FTC project. Start by heading over to the official FTC GitHub repository, link in the description. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see several options for downloading your project. However, I strongly recommend using one of these two methods, which we'll go over next. The first method is using Git clone. Right click on your working folder on your local machine and select open git bash here. When the terminal opens, copy and paste the line as shown, paste it here and press enter. Wait a moment for the download to complete and you'll see all the files from the project cloned onto your machine. The second method is using download zip. On the FTC repository page, Click on the code button as shown here. From the drop down menu, select download zip. Once the zip file is downloaded, decompress it, and you'll find a folder containing all the files you need. Now, go to github.com and log into your account. On the home page, Click New as shown here. Enter a name for your repository. I'll name mine FTC 101. Adding a description is optional and you can set the visibility to either public or private based on your preference. Let's make it public. Click Create Repository and now you're ready to upload your folder from your computer to GitHub where you and your teammates can collaborate. Once the repository is successfully created, you'll see a screen like this. If you downloaded the repo using download zip, simply copy the three lines shown below and paste them into the git bash command prompt open from the downloaded folder. If you see an error like this, first type in git status. So apparently this is not the git repository. So now type in git init, then git add dot, then git commit dash m and your commit message. If you see an error message like this, that means you'll need to configure your identity. So now you'll have to enter your email, your name, and your password to your GitHub account. Run the commit command again and it should work now. Then, paste the three lines you just copied and log in to GitHub. And now, you should be able to see the code that you uploaded to GitHub. However, if you downloaded the repo using Git clone, after pasting the three lines, you might encounter an error. This happens because you're not authorized to make changes to the FTC repository itself. To fix this, first type in git remote rm origin, then hit enter. After that, you can paste the three lines that you copied and hit enter. Now you should be able to see the code uploaded to GitHub. Now let's finalize the Android Studio installation. You can just click next until the installation finishes. Now that we have successfully created our repository, let's make our first commit on GitHub. After launching Android Studio, Drag your FTC code folder into the app, which will open it as an Android Studio project. Wait a few minutes for the Gradle sync to complete, and once it's done, you'll be ready to start editing your code.
Take some time to explore your code and make a few changes. Once you're ready, let's move on to making a commit on GitHub. But before making a commit, you'll need to connect your GitHub account to Android Studio. To do this, go to File, Settings, Version Control, GitHub, and click the plus button. Log into your GitHub account, and once that's set up, you'll be ready to update your GitHub repository. Now, let's start committing. First, make some changes to the files. Then, go to git, commit, and select all the files you want to push to GitHub. Then, type in your commit message. Then, hit commit and push. Finally, click push. Refresh your GitHub page, and you'll see your first commit successfully updated in your repository. Congratulations! You're now equipped with the basics to start coding and collaborating with your team. Remember, programming your robot is a journey. Don't be afraid to experiment, make mistakes, and learn along the way. Keep exploring, and soon, you'll be bringing your ideas into reality on the competition field. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications so you never miss our upcoming FTC 101 videos. Good luck, and happy coding!